Welcome into Sports Memos Betting Podcast for Monday, March 9th. It's March Madness is here, but uh, we're talking professional football from multiple facets, XFL opening line report, plus some NFL betting action with Teddy Covers. Follow him on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. Teddy, happy Monday morning to you. Hey, happy Monday, uh, Drew. How are you today, buddy? I'm doing good, man. A lot going on at Sports Memo, a lot going on at Wager Talk, and uh, heck, the XFL. We've talked about it before in the past. I'm a big fan, Teddy. What are you thinking? Well, first of all, I want to give you a shout out. Another 5% big ticket winner. It was a little bit of a sweat with LA, but they rallied from behind to get you the money. And I know uh, so you've been doing very well in the XFL. You're doing pretty well across all sports. I got you 11 and 3, your last 14, Drew. So, uh, keep up the good work, my friend, and congrats on another five percenter at cashing. Second straight week you've done that in the XFL. Well, thank you, Teddy. And yes, you're right. They started off 17 to nothing uh, on the wrong side of that, and I was laying two, but LA did come back and uh, cash that five percenter. So thank you for the shout out, Teddy. But we got four games this week in the XFL. Start off at the top of the card here. And guys, we're talking uh, about 11 a.m. Pacific on Monday. And really, there is not a mature market right now. So we're just going to be going our, over our numbers. And Caesars actually just released numbers right before we started this pod. So we do have those out, but no totals. We'll uh, break down these four games and then get into the NFL offseason betting markets with Teddy Covers. We got Houston at New York here, Teddy. Houston the Roughnecks, what a lot of people are going to be power rating, the number one team in the XFL. We're seeing Caesars right now with a minus six. Guys, we did a uh, little little thing off, off camera here where Teddy was reading the numbers off to me from Caesars. I put Houston minus three, mainly because we've seen this home road dichotomy in the XFL, not really favoring away teams. I know Houston is power rated higher. We're seeing a minus six now in the marketplace at the New York Guardians. Teddy, any... Uh, Initial thoughts here with Houston at New York. Well, the first bets have come on Houston here. This opened four and a half. And again, we literally are talking about one book in the world that I know of that has numbers as we're talking. Let's give Caesars credit. Uh, some of the books that posted early last week didn't post early this week for whatever reason. Uh, perhaps it didn't work out uh, in their favor. Uh, but the bottom line here is that uh, of the four games, we've seen two of them have point and a half line moves. Um, based on fairly limited action. This is one of those games. Houston opened four and a half and now bet up uh, to six. Both teams uh, winning uh, this past weekend. I, I watched Houston-Seattle. If you watched early in that game, I mean, Seattle, they ran the ball mm -hmm. down the roughnecks' throats. And then all of a sudden, Houston <laughs> uh, picked it up offensively and made some defensive adjustments that they needed to make, and they pretty much dominated the rest of the ball game. So they, uh, one thing that we like, we like teams that take a punch and can punch back, and Houston did that uh, again this past week, which is a positive. The Guardians feel like every game they're in, they're either the right side or the wrong side, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I remember uh, when they played in D.C., and, you know, the offensive line wasn't blocking anybody. <laughs> there was, you know, they, they, I mean, they, they didn't matter. Uh, what the number was in that game, that offense wasn't going to do anything. That wasn't the case uh, against Dallas. Uh, they had their success uh, against the Renegades this last weekend. Is that a buy sign on New York? That's my question for you because Houston, we know. You know, they are one of the uh, favorites to win it all. Guardians, they've been – a little bit more inconsistent than that, but their A game has been pretty good. Yeah, it has. And, and you know, the Guardians, they, they got kind of a defense that gets after it. Their quarterback, Perez, a guy I, I really didn't know coming out of college. I believe he went to, you know, some Division two school, something like that. And um, I, I, to tell you the truth, he's played pretty well, Teddy. I mean, he's pretty accurate and uh, doesn't make the big mistakes, which is uh, usually a good thing at the quarterback position. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, there's a – there are quarterbacks that are going to win games for you. There are quarterbacks that aren't going to lose games for you. We'll hopefully put them in the – I think we put them in the second of the two categories. But, you know, you want the QB that's not going to kill you. And, and he's been pretty good in, in terms of not killing you, at least in most games. Yeah, and, and Houston's quarterback, uh, you know, good good on both sides in terms of can run it, pass it. Uh, likely the MVP here in the XFL out the gate, talking about P.J. Walker there. We got St. Louis versus Tampa Bay up next here. 
In my opinion, the Battle Hawks, I believe they are, St. Louis here, the number two power rated, by my numbers, they are the number two power rated team in the XFL at Tampa Bay, the Vipers. We've seen Tampa Bay, and I faded them yesterday talking about that L.A. game uh, with L.A. beating Tampa Bay. But Tampa Bay back at home, it's kind of been a different team when playing in Raymond James. And St. Louis, you know, one of the best teams in the XFL, didn't look all that great this past week, Teddy, now having to go on the road down to the state of Florida. Tampa Bay is a talented team themselves. I, I'm not looking to lay much of a price here with St. Louis, although I was kind of surprised to see minus three. I thought the market would have them a little bit higher just because Tampa Bay has had a tough go of it lately. If you've been betting on Tampa Bay more times than not, you've been, uh, they, well, they have been a money burner overall this season. Any, any quick thoughts here, St. Louis, Tampa Bay, Teddy? Uh, I mean, here's my question about the Battle Hawks. Can they score? You know, this is not a good offensive ball club. I at any point this season, you know, defensively they've been there. But, you know, Tampa, to me, if you're, you know, you're like defense dominates. Let's get the better defense. I don't know that I want that it's about the better defense right now in the XFL for me. I need teams that can score. And Tampa can move the ball up and down the field. We've seen that enough already. This number surprised me a little bit. And St. Louis being the second highest power rating team, uh, my numbers have a little bit shorter than that. I wouldn't be surprised if Tampa takes a little bit of money, even though all the money came against Camp Tampa uh, last week in L.A. I think that had something to do with the travel spot. Huh? And St. Louis in the travel spot this week. We got Dallas versus D.C. up next. D.C. looking good uh, this past week. Minus four and a half against Dallas. The big story here is Dallas struggles. They scoring the scoring touchdowns without Landry Jones at the quarterback position. Uh, Nelson, you know, he, he shows flashes of of being a pretty good quarterback. He he, he was pretty good in college at ECU, but uh, here in the XFL, he struggled. Teddy, the offense has struggled with him behind center, and uh, DC minus four and a half. I'll tell you, it's a it's a one way bet for me, man. It's DC or pass. How do you feel? I'm with you 100. percent Again, when you when you talk about the basics of football. It's about dominating the trenches, about winning the battle on the line of scrimmage. And offensively, D.C.'s okay. Their defensive front has been impressive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it really has. And it was, again, this past weekend, uh, they shut down St. Louis. So, you know, I, I, I know I talked a minute ago, hey, I want a team that can score in Tampa. I want a team that can score in Tampa. But I also want a team that can control the defensive line of scrimmage uh, like uh, D.C. Uh, has been able to do. Uh, this number hasn't moved from the opener. Minus four and a half, still sitting at minus four and a half. Although, as you mentioned, this is not a mature market, not even close just yet. We only have one book as we're recording that has posted numbers so far. Guys, we got uh, one more XFL game, then some NFL offseason betting news. We're going to be breaking down with Teddy Covers, of course. We do this each and every Monday. And uh, during football season, it's the NFL opening line report, one of the more successful shows on the channel. And uh, coupon code for this podcast we got dmm50 that's dmm50 at checkout we'll take 50 dollars off the rest of the college basketball season that gets you conference tournaments all the way throughout march madness 50 dollars off any handicapper sports memo or wager talk teddy covers a great choice here guys 61 percent last two years in march he's 59 percent college basketball the last month so uh Headed in the right direction with Teddy Covers, sportsmemo.com. Use the coupon code DMM50 at checkout. It will work for any handicapper. Myself, Drew Martin, I'm hot right now. Also, wager talk, any handicapper on there as well. We got LA at Seattle. Last game up here, Teddy. LA minus one on the road at Seattle. LA was good to me this past week, Teddy. Good quarterback. Seattle, some quarterback issues, but I'll tell you, this is a Seattle Dragons team that has not quit on the season. They do play tough, and they're at home, and in, if you've seen them play at home before, guys, they have a real home field advantage, not only in the NFL, in the XFL as well. Tough to lay a number on the road. We're seeing LA minus one at Seattle, Teddy. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the LA opened three, and uh, much like the one other game we talked about, a line move, I don't know if it was one or two bets. All I know is that immediately, pretty close to, you know, within three minutes of the line opening, uh, it went from L.A. minus three to L.A. minus one and a half. And that could just be one bet, <laughs> you know. Uh, but the, the early money 
uh, did come first. Yeah, and I'm with you uh, on the Dragons. Look, you know, this is a team that, from a, from a defensive talent standpoint, I haven't been impressed necessarily. From a can we control the game flow? They've shown signs, and again, they're uh, you know in in a in a league we talk all this. Can you can you throw? Can you throw? Can you throw? Uh, this is a team that can run the football, uh, and if you can run the football successfully against an LA defense that isn't great, it's necessarily stopping the run. Uh, maybe you can hang around here as a home dog. Not surprised that the first bets here came on Seattle, even though I'm not convinced they're the better of these two teams. Teddy. That's it for the XFL. Guys, uh, thanks for for any questions you threw out on Twitter. We'll get to those at the end of the podcast here. But we got some uh, NFL news, Teddy. We got Tom Brady, where he's going to end up. We got some divisional odds out in Vegas, I believe. Uh, where do you want to start, man? Yeah, no, they're not, they're, these are offshore numbers, uh, okay. but they're the start of a market, you know. <laughs> uh, so we don't have I mean, we don't have Brady numbers, uh, you know. And f- honestly, the, the Patriots quarterback in week one of the 2020 regular season, uh, if not Brady, you know, Bridgewater. Tannehill, Mariota, the three favorites. Can you imagine if uh, New England trots Andy Dalton out? Wow. Yeah, that'd <laughs> I, be a tough one. I could. Derek Carr, you know? Maybe. Uh, Philip Rivers for the Patriots? Who knows? Uh, but the the more interesting of the two, I really thought, were the first uh, – these are the first divisional odds I've seen. All right. And we can go through the four uh, – the eight divisions. Uh, you want to you you run through the numbers? Because there's, yeah, let's do there's it. some stuff that really stood out to me initially. Two bets in particular. Uh, that stood out to me. And let me make it clear. It is March. All right. These bets won't close until September. They won't cash until what? The end of December or January next year. If I'm locking up my money <laughs> right now, the only reason I'm going to do it is because this is a line I'm not going to see again. I don't know that we saw that from these openers. That said, there's a couple of intriguing long shots uh, that may be worthy about talking about winning some of these divisions. So uh, let's start wherever you want to go. You want to read them or you want me to do it, Drew? Um, did you send them to me? I did. All right. I, I, I can read them for us. Uh, and, and guys, remember, Teddy covers what, Teddy, last five years in the NFL. It's been uh, it's been really good. For, for yourself and the clients, right? Uh, what you're you're well over the, the it's fifty seven percent over the last five years. That counts every play, um, regular season, postseason, the the works. Uh, so I mean, the NFL has been successful. You know, the NFL has been profit producing. And again, I was you know, I was hoping for a monster year last year. It didn't happen. We had you know, it was not one of the better seasons out of the last five. All that said, uh, we've had some real good years <laughs> during this stretch, and I'm you know. When you do the work now, it pays off in September. It pays off in October. It really does. So, uh, and f- let's be honest, football's king. That's why we're doing a football podcast year round here on Monday morning. All right, guys, we're uh, got the AFC East here. Patriots minus two fifty, Bills plus three fifty, Jets plus seven hundred, Dolphins plus two thousand with three first round NFL draft picks, maybe four. Uh, who knows? Maybe a plus two thousand with the Miami Dolphins. I believe they were the last team not named the Patriots to win the AFC East, Teddy, back in two thousand eight. But uh, heck, Patriots minus two fifty leading the way. Any opinion here on these four in the AFC East? So if I'm making a bet, and again, I'm, I'm looking for long shots that stand out. I am bullish on the New York Football Jets. All right, the Jets have a quarterback. Period. They have the best quarterback in the division. Period. Okay, if Tom Brady comes back for New England, the Jets have the best quarterback in the division. <laughs> okay, uh, and I understand that Brady's got six rings and, uh, and, and Arnold's got none. Uh, well aware. But we're also seeing a Tom Brady that's, on the, you know, look, he's on the wrong end of his career. And the Patriots have a whole lot of holes around him. And a whole lot of que- more question marks for New England than any year uh, in the Brady-Belichick era. So at plus 700 out of that group, yeah, the Jets absolutely stand out to me. You have a quarterback. They've got salary cap room to make moves. They have a defense. There's hope for the Jets. I know the Bills are there, and the Bills deserve to be the second choice. But I'm looking for what I would consider to be live long shots and the Jets at plus 700. Again, I said there were two that stood out to me. The Jets are one of them. Uh, The other one doesn't come probably until we get near the end. And Teddy, you seem pretty confident there. Sam Darnold, the best quarterback in the division. One, you got Tom Brady, like you touched on. 
Also, the other two quarterbacks, I mean, I, 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 are they that bad? Who's starting for the Dolphins this year? Is, is it not Fitzpatrick? Uh, man, maybe. <laughs> I thought he was pretty good, no? Yeah. He was pretty good. But if you ask me, if I have one game to win, you know, or one throw to make, it's third and 18, uh, you ask me which quarterback do I want to make, it's Sam Darnold. Okay. It's not it's not a debate for me. Okay. He's the best quarterback in that division right now. Fair enough. And if you're getting the best quarterback in plus 350 price tag might be worth a shot there with the Bills to win the AFC East. We got AFC South. I don't want the Bills. I want the Jets at plus 700, not the Bills at plus 350. I don't know why I just said that. Thank you for correcting me because uh, <laughs> there would have definitely been comments on uh, <laughs> Sam Darnold is not the quarterback for the Bills. No, he is the quarterback for the Jets, and it's plus 700, more than twice the value in terms of uh, money getting back there on a $100 bet, plus 700, $700 if the Jets win the AFC East. We got AFC South here, Teddy. Texans plus 150, Titans plus 200, Colts plus 250, Jaguars plus 900. Have at it. There's nothing. <laughs> you know, Texans, I mean, Texans, Titans, Colts are their three co favorites essentially plus 150, plus $2, plus 250. They all deserve to be uh, in that group. And two of the three, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be yet. So this isn't, and, and I don't look at Jacksonville as a team about to make the leap. So uh, again, the focus, I'm not, okay, let's go through every team and everything they've already done. No. All we're looking for is, is there a good bet to make? Is there a live long shot we can look at? And in this division, there isn't. Fair enough, Teddy. Keep it short and sweet. We got, what, AFC North up next. Ravens, minus 275 favorites. Then a pretty big drop-off here to second, third, and fourth. Second up would be the Browns, plus 475. Also the Steelers at plus 475. And then the lowly Bengals, plus 2,800. Yeah, I mean, the division's with the big chalk as favorites, and there's four of them. You know, the AFC East has the Patriots at minus 250. The AFC North has the Ravens at minus 275. Uh, the AFC West has the Chiefs at minus 450. And the NFC South uh, has the Saints at minus $4. But when you see these big favorites in a four-team division, it means that you're going to be getting some decent prices on the other squads. And frankly, you know, I wouldn't argue with not It didn't jump out at me the way that the, the you know the Jets and the other one we're going to talk about uh, do. But I wouldn't argue with anyone taking a shot with Cleveland or Pittsburgh. You know, in the plus four seventy-five range, both of those teams, in theory, should be capable of competing for this division. And while Baltimore, you know, brilliant. In the regular season again uh, last year, be interesting to see if they're able to have that similar success now with a little bit more film on uh, what Lamar Jackson can do and what the Ravens' game plan is supposed to be. And, and they still have some defensive questions. So I, I do look as the Ravens as being a potentially vulnerable favorite there. If I was going to make a bet for the AFC North, it would be one of the two. Seven. Again, I'm not looking at the Bengals at 28 to one. I don't see that happening. <laughs> you know. But the Browns or the Steelers, plus 475, I wouldn't talk anyone out of a bet on one of those, even both, to win that division. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could double it up, plus 475. But what, what do you see in the Browns that, that kind of makes you think that they have a shot here, Teddy? From a talent standpoint, the Browns were better than the best team in the division last year. All right? They didn't execute. The coaching wasn't there. Mayfield regressed. Right. But – you cannot tell me that that defense isn't as good as any defense in that division, and you cannot tell me that offense isn't as good as any uh, in that division when it comes to skill position talent, when it comes to, you know, they have some work to do on the offensive line, and that's the one area that we need to see improvement for Cleveland and moves in the offseason from, uh, from the Browns. But I would expect with a new coaching staff and perhaps this time a competent coaching staff that the Browns won't underachieve as much as they did a year ago. Titty. That was an underachieving team. Teddy, I, I I want to punch back a little bit because the Browns, yeah. the Browns with the the, the best talent, the, I guess the most talented offense in the division. I would go towards the quarterback position, and in, in, in saying that, I would I would rank the Ravens because I feel that they have a better quarterback, and the Steelers, um, possibly ahead of them. No, I wouldn't. Okay, <laughs> uh, but. For you know, if Cleveland's going to win the division, they have to fix the offensive line, and that's the area where we're looking for improvement over the course. You know, between the free agency and the draft, uh, the Browns got to fix that. If they fix that, which they will, uh, <laughs> um, uh, and but 
You know, Mayfield regressed last year, but yeah. it was a broken coaching staff last year. If the coaching staff's broken again this year, it may be the same thing. Uh, but again, at nearly five to one, they don't have to do anything special. They got to win the division. I think they're live enough to take a look at in that in that price range. Okay, we got uh, AFC West odds here. Chiefs minus four fifty. Talk about a big favorite here. I believe this is the biggest drop off be- between. Number yes. one and number two, AFC West here. Chiefs minus 450. Second up, guys, all the way down at plus 800 is the Chargers. So Chiefs minus 450, Chargers plus 800, Broncos plus 1,000, and Raiders. Your Las Vegas, our Las Vegas Raiders, Teddy, at plus 1,000 as well. Yeah, no bet to be made here. Uh, I think Kansas City is going to be right there. I, would, I mean, look, if you're looking for a real long shot, I mean, the stranger things have happened than the Broncos or Raiders turning things around. Um, I, I would personally price those teams. I'd be more likely to back either of those two teams than I would be for the Chargers for this next year. Uh, but, you know, the Chiefs deserve to be significant shock. This is not a division that uh, stands out to me as, as one that's particularly good for, uh, for a wager. Teddy, I actually I, – I, I like the underdogs in this division. I'll tell you why. One, because – or the main reason is because the Chiefs – in my opinion, have the best player in the NFL at the quarterback position. And if he gets hurt, now what? That, that, yeah. That's why I would look to maybe do, like you're saying, maybe a, a shot here on the Raiders. Yeah, I, love, I mean, Broncos or Raiders, you know, 10 to 1. Uh, and, and again, you don't have to go and do anything crazy. You don't have to win any Super Bowls. You don't have to win any playoff games. All you got to do is beat the teams in their division. Um, there's worse bets to be to make than, than Denver or Oakland. Or Oakland. Or Las Vegas, they're on my hometown team now. I'm still calling them the old name. Oh, it's okay. You you get a year and a half before that comes back. No, this is this is the Chargers where you get a six year window to still call them San Diego. No, this they're they're in Vegas now. Uh, they're the Vegas Raiders. I, I do agree with you on that. It, it's it's a quicker turnaround than the Chargers. And to tell you the truth, the Chargers, I feel like you could call them San Diego Chargers for the rest of your life. And if anybody makes fun of you, you can just tell them to take a a, a long walk off a of short pier, Teddy. Uh, I'll to, okay, I'll, I'll tell them to do that. NFC East odds here. We've got <laughs> Eagles plus 125. Cowboys plus 140. Tight odds here at the top between the Eagles and Cowboys. Eagles plus 125. Cowboys plus 140. Giants plus 650. Redskins plus 800. This one in the NFC North, kind of the tightest in terms of uh, projections here, Teddy. Any feelings on the NFC East? Well, yeah, and the AFC South, too, with the three teams at True. plus 250 or yeah. less. Uh, you know, those three teams, uh, that, those are expected to be the most uh, competitive divisions, the divisions with most question marks. You know, I, I wouldn't argue with the play on the Giants at plus 650. Uh, out of the four bets to be made, that's the one that stands out to me as something that offers value that has potential. And again, I look at Daniel Jones as a quarterback who um, I want my money on more than I want him against. Uh, but I mean, Philly and Dallas deserve to be the two jocks here. Um, and they're both power. I mean, it went, they went in the off season power rate, basically even, they were pretty even last year. Uh, and they're still the best two, two teams in the division, I think, uh, going to the off season. So, uh, it's not, uh, not a division that stood out to me, but again, um, uh, if I had to make a bet here, it'd be Giants plus 650. That's the one that, uh, that intrigues me. We got the NFC one. South Saints minus 400 Falcons plus 600. Bucks plus 800. That's the Tampa Bay Bucks plus 800. And the Carolina Panthers plus 2,000, Teddy. So, what are the Bucks doing at 8 to 1? Um, I mean, they had the defensive player of the year in the NFL at the quarterback position. I don't know. That was last year. Well, who do they got this year? We don't know yet, but they're going to have Arians isn't going to the, There's enough quarterbacks out there. Okay, and look, this is a very rare year in the NFL. There's quarterbacks all over the place, veteran quarterbacks who can win games and who can take teams to the playoffs. Mariota's taking his team to the playoffs. Dalton's taking his team to the playoffs. Tannehill's taking his team to the playoffs. Has Bridgewater taken his team to the playoffs? I don't know if he has or not. Um, But he certainly, you know, there are quarterbacks out there. And then once the you know once the pieces start to move, the Raiders get uh, Brady. Guess what? Derek Carr's out there now, or whoever. Bruce Arians will have himself a quarterback. Tampa's got a defense. They have a receiving core. They have an offensive line. They have a coach, and it's a division that over the years has seen an enormous amount of turnover from one year to the next. Saints were great last year. They won all the close games. Trust me, I know. I had a Saints under ticket in my pocket. It wasn't pretty. It was really frustrating. Um, cause they literally won every close game all year. You know, Breeze is old now. 
Yeah, Bucks. That's a, they said there was two at the top of the show. The Jets at plus 700, the Bucks at plus 800. That's the two that absolutely jumped at me. I think Tampa's live there. Teddy, what about the Panthers? Your overall thoughts here, and I'll throw something out. One, I, I guess I haven't been 100% up to date with the NFL uh, movie. It, it, Cam Newton is still a possibility to be the quarterback of Carolina, right? Correct. Okay. And I, Let me throw out a philosophy here at plus 2,000. You know, I know it was, what, five years ago now, but he's he's not – terribly far removed from being NFL MVP, bringing his team to the Super Bowl here. He's that type of player that has high highs, low lows granted. So uh, you know that going in, but with a plus, you know, 20 to one here, Teddy on the Carolina and you have him at the quarterback position with that upside, you don't think it's worth a shot. So to win the division, the Bengals are the lowest choice at plus 28, you know, 28 to one. And then come the Dolphins and the Panthers at 20 to 1. You know, I mean, there's worse bets to be made than Tampa, uh, than uh, Miami, I don't know, Miami's not here, than Carolina at 20 to 1 to win that division. All that said, the reason the Panthers fell apart down the stretch last year, that was not a good roster. There's a lot of holes there. It's not just let's plug in a quarterback and everything will be fine uh, for the Panthers. Uh, but that is a division with a lot of worst to first history. Yeah. Uh, like I said, there's there's worse bets to make than Carolina at twenty to one. The one that stood out to me was Tampa at eight to one. Okay, we got uh, two more left here, guys. The NFC Norris and the NFC West. Remember the coupon code DMM fifty for fifty dollars off any handicapper wager talk sports memo. Multiple uses, guys. You don't only have to get one; you can use it multiple times for the rest of the college basketball season for fifty dollars off. NFC North here, Packers. Plus 140, Vikings, plus 175. We got the Bears, plus 350, and the Lions, plus 800, Teddy. This is another one, uh, kind of uh, kind of tight odds here in terms of uh, first to last with the Packers leading leading the charge at plus 140. Yeah, I mean, the uh, Packers and Vikings are going to be power rated fairly close to one another. You know, uh, the Bears, who knows what they're going to get from Trubisky. You know, at 8 to 1, the Lions... The Lions weren't hopeless last year. They weren't hopeless the year before. And if Stafford's healthy, they're not hopeless this year. Uh, that said, you know, ooh, value with the Lions. If you could take a <laughs> – I got a whole drawer full of bad bets. <laughs> oh, there was value with the Lions. Uh, no, there's no there's no bet that I'm uh, on, the, on the verge of uh, getting involved with here. Ooh, value with the Lions. I like that one, Teddy. We got uh, yeah. NFC West here to finish it off. San Francisco 49ers minus 125. Seattle Seahawks plus 325. The St. Louis, oh, there we go. The uh, LA Rams <laughs> plus 375. And the uh, Arizona Cardinals plus 900, Teddy. Yeah, and nothing, uh, nothing jumped up from this division uh, for me either. Uh, I thought, I mean, literally, I thought this is a, their, their price, correct? You know, Seattle at plus 3 to 1, better than 3 to 1. Maybe take a shot there. You know, uh, the 49ers have a, the, the Super Bowl loser hangover is real. Um, it's real, right? I mean, again, so I, I wouldn't lay with San Fran there. Arizona's, they got holes to fill. The Rams have holes to fill. The Seahawks, I, I guess out of that group, I'd probably take Seattle, but I'm not looking for the three to one shots to lock my money up in March. I'm looking for the seven and eight and nine to one shots. And, um, this isn't it. All right. Good stuff, Teddy. Uh, breaking down the uh, divisional odds here, guys. Check out TeddyCoversSportsMemo.com. Obviously, uh, good in college basketball, 61% the last two years in March, 59% college basketball the last month. So check him out. Coupon code DMM50 takes $50 off his rest of college basketball season. Also good for any other handicapper, SportsMemo.com or WagerTalk.com. Teddy, anything else you want to throw out there before we shut this down? I'd like to say thank you for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with Drew and I. We appreciate it. Uh, thanks for all the likes. Thanks for all the follows. Thanks for all the retweets. Genuinely, thank you guys. Um, and uh, we'll do it again next week. Cheers. Yeah, absolutely, Teddy. Well said. And uh, guys, almost forgot the questions. We did get a couple of them. We do appreciate Ooh. it on Twitter at Teddy Co at Teddy underscore covers and at Drew Martin Betts. We got Top Flight Sports, a friend of the show. Uh, I have. He's got – um. it looks like if you wait for the overcorrection to a loss from week before, you end up actually getting significantly better value by waiting. Unlike the NFL, 
where the value is unusually it's usually gone early in the week in most cases um do you see that in the xfl teddy where actually waiting you can get a better number i guess off of a off of a losing team or have you not noticed a difference so there's certainly a recency bias yeah. in the xfl there's a recency bias in the nfl as well um the NFL is attracting on a week in week out basis about a million times more wise guy dollars than the XFL is is attracting. Really? Well, yeah. Well, well, I I mean, I I know total money wagered, yes, but what would be the reasoning for I guess more sharp betters not to get out early in the XFL because it's a more inefficient market. Because the limits are lower. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're a syndicate you're not going to be worrying about making it's, – it's not about making $500 or $1,000 bets. Um, it's about taking positions where, you know, you're getting down fifty grand or hundred grand on a game like they do in the NFL with the sides and the total moves, you know. It's, you can do that in the NFL, a hundred grand right off the open. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? When you're talking about dealing with – I'm not talking about legally. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm talking about the way that the pro betters work. I'm talking about globally. Uh, and when you're talking about syndicate markets, you're talking about a lot of bookies and a lot of offshores as well as the uh, uh, the, the legal uh, the legal books uh, here in the U.S. So, but yeah, you're talking about the enormous difference between what you can get down for an XFL game versus what you get down for a, an NFL game. Um, so I don't know, I'm not, I don't know if I've answered the question, uh, but I haven't seen it. Um, enough to be able to say, yes, this is definitely, you can wait in the XFL and find more value that way. Um, if you're seeing it that way, by all means, uh, more power to it. But I haven't seen that as, as, as anything uh, st systemic thus far. Makes a lot of sense, Teddy. And uh, I, I, I agree with you. I think it's a little bit too early to tell just on uh, that one factor there at Top Flight Sports. But we do appreciate the question. And guys, please uh, shout out any questions at Teddy underscore covers at Drew Martin bets. We do this segment each and every Monday about 11 a.m. Pacific time. So, uh, yeah, Teddy, any, any last words here? Yeah, we've got more numbers up. Circa just posted. Anything different? Uh, yeah, everything's different. <laughs> Houston, six and a half, total 47. St. Louis, two and a half, total 43 and a half. D.C., minus five and a half, total 34 and a half. Seattle, L.A., pick them. Total 41 and a half. Those are the openers from Circa uh, off the Caesars openers that we talked earlier in the show. I like it, Teddy. And uh, why do you think it's switching in terms of Circa? I believe Circa was first last week and now Caesars being first this week. Do you think there's anything there? And also, why is Vegas market beating beating the, the offshore market, in your opinion? Because the action for XFL is not drawing a ton of action <laughs> or a ton of attention. You know, these aren't uh, – the offshores haven't made a whole lot – you know, they're, they're not putting uh, a ton of effort and energy into it because there aren't a whole lot of people betting it yet. Okay, and That's do you the think that there's it. something there – this is just off the top of my head because I think this is the case. Do you think that the actual money being spent, the resources are going more into the legal market now with it becoming state by state, becoming a much bigger market and the offshore market becoming a smaller market – that this is something that's going to be more than just the XFL. It's going to be more in in all sports betting. I don't understand the question. Can you can you in, ask again? So rephrase it. In, in my opinion, resources to to putting out numbers to really anything in the industry is going more to the legal side than the the offshore market. Do you think that the offshores are actually feeling that and might not lead the marketplace in MLB and in, in the NFL in years to come? It's actually going to be more of the legal market le leading the opening odds? Um, I don't know. I don't know that... Uh, the offshore market's still pretty freaking big, okay? <laughs> don't underestimate the global betting economy, all right? And even with the legal U.S. books in other states... Besides Nevada now, you know, they've taken they're, – they're siphoning off money from the bookies. They're siphoning off money from the offshores. But when you talk about the, the spigot of global money that's going into offshores versus the portion of that money that they're now losing because it's going to legal 
uh, books around the U.S., you know, they feel it, but it's not like they just lost 90% of their handle or something, you know. Okay. Um, and and therefore, I would expect, again, when, when it comes to the offshore, there are the market leaders and then there's everybody else. And the market leaders, I think, would continue to lead, um, even though that hasn't been the case for the XFL. The XFL market's just not, it's just not big enough. Okay. Well said, Teddy. Uh, always a good answer right off the top. So, uh, get it. heck, we can make a, a whole podcast about that uh, maybe over the summer. But, uh, guys, thanks for tuning in at Teddy underscore covers at Drew Martin Bets on Twitter. And uh, best of luck with your bets. We'll talk tomorrow with some NHL.